It's Friday, March 21st, 2014, and let's talk about what happened all this week over at xdadevelopers.com. First up, device and ROM update news. Now, as we've mentioned over the last few months, lots of devices have received updates to KitKat at this point. Unfortunately, the grand majority of the Sony devices have not been receiving official updates, but it looks like that's all about to change, finally. Because as of this week, Sony has started rolling out updates to KitKat for the Xperia Z Ultra, the Xperia Z1, and the Z1 Compact. And additionally, they've said other devices will start to receive updates sometime in the future, specifically devices like the original Xperia Z, the ZL, the ZR, and the Tablet Z, which should happen sometime in quarter two of this year, which means sometime, hopefully in the next three months or so. And then additionally, the Xperia T2, E1, and M2 should be receiving this update, but that's at some point down the line. Again, potentially sometime this year, but they didn't really give any sort of time frame on that one. Now, like I said, it's kind of a bummer that it's like just now starting to happen, but at least it is happening. KitKat adoption it has been slow, but it's actually been faster than just about any other release of Android, so can't really complain about that. And additionally, a couple of HTC Ones received their updates to KitKat this week as well. The Australian version got its official over-the-air update, and the European version, which apparently got its update previously, but had the update pulled or put back on hold for some reasons, was released again as of this week. The over-the-air updates have been made available for both of those if you want to go check them out and download them to your device of choice. Now, speaking of putting KitKat on your device of choice, one of the things that has gotten a little bit more difficult to do with KitKat, at least if you're running a stock ROM, is installing your user-level applications to your SD card. Because there are still some devices out there that don't have a huge amount of storage on them. Maybe some of the Samsung devices that claim to come with 16 gigs of storage and really only have like six. Or if you buy a cheaper device that only has like four gigs of storage or something and you want to be able to use that SD card slot. Well, like I said, with KitKat, a lot of that got ripped out. A lot of that became non-functional. Now, if you're using a custom ROM, it's not really such a big deal. But like I said, on stock, even if you're rooted, it's not going to give you that option by default. However, XDA senior member T. Liebeck, and I'm probably saying that wrong anyway, has created an application that you can use on stock ROMs on rooted devices that will allow you to move your applications over to the SD card from your user installed applications. So it's really not anything huge and major. It's something that a lot of custom ROMs already come with. But still, if you are interested in sticking to a stock ROM and you have it rooted, this could definitely be useful for you, especially, like I said, if you're running low on storage space. And actually, as far as I'm concerned, the biggest news of this week, this really, really interesting news, we talked about this a little bit before. Google said they were going to be announcing some wearable SDK information. Well, as of this week, they officially unveil Android Wear. And this is effectively going to be sort of a new version of Android with a new UI on top of it, kind of like I talked about before, that's geared toward wearables. And not just the square wearable type or, you know, most of the watches that we see now that are wearable are square. And then you've got Google Glass, which is a square interface, but also potentially for round ones, which doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal and big of a difference, but it does add a lot when it comes to just comfort and look and feel of the device. When you're wearing a watch on your wrist, having something square can be kind of awkward and boxy and the corners might catch on your wrist or something like that. Having it round, it's a little more stylish, it's a little more comfortable perhaps. And to go along with that, Motorola and LG both came out and said, yeah, by the way, we're making these kind of Android Wear smartwatches, so be on the lookout for those. Motorola's has officially been called the Moto 360 and it is the one that's going to be round. In Google's sort of Android Wear unveil video, they heavily showcased the 360 360, although the grand majority of the things you see with relation to it were simulated screen images. But then I saw a, a GIF somewhere later, GIF, GIF, I really don't care, uh, of someone showing off the, the Moto 360 in a Hangout, and it's actually a really functional device at this point. So I will be very excited to see that when it does become a real product, when I'm able to get my hands on it. Because getting something effectively akin to Google Now, the kind of experience you can get with Google Glass on a watch, it's definitely gonna be a huge seller. Most of the smartwatches we've seen so far have been heavily tied into your mobile device, whereas this one would be an extension of that by way of acting as Google Now, being able to say, call this person, or remind me to do this, or give me directions to do that. 
in that very natural way that Google Now does work, be it a hands-on or a hands-free experience. So I'm very excited to hear some more about that and again, to get my hands on some Android Wear devices. If you're interested in talking a little bit more about these things, you can of course leave comments down below, but we've also created a forum over on the XDA site for Android Wear stuff. And actually speaking of Android Wear, along with the unveil of it, there's also an emulator that you can run on your PC. So you can take a look at it, see how it feels, see how it works and everything like that. But not only that, it's able to be rooted. XTA senior members Mr. BIMC and R3 Pwn have worked out a root script that you can put on your emulator that has to be run every time it reboots, but it does root the emulator so that you can have full root access and you can run your root only applications and things like that. So that if you're developing an app that needs root capabilities, you can do that and you can take advantage of running the emulator now to get a head start on it. The script to go ahead and root it is available for Windows and in a shell script format, which should work on Linux or Mac as far as I understand. So if you are interested in messing around with the Wear emulator, definitely go ahead and give this a look because having it rooted is just one more step in the right direction, right? And actually speaking of forums that have been added recently, we added some other forums this week, specifically for the Oppo Find 7, which looks like a really interesting device, the all new HTC One or the 2014 HTC One, whatever you wanna call it, and the Samsung Galaxy Note 3 Neo. And finally, to wrap things up, three other videos were posted to XDA Developer TV this week. The first one was another XDA Exposed Tuesday video from TK talking about quick access and launching applications from your lock screen. Then Adam unboxed the Omate True Smart smartwatch the XDA way. And then TK did another Android app review about an app called Don't Pause that stops your notifications and other interruptions while you're listening to music or watching videos. So for the links to any of those videos or any of the other stories I talked about, make sure to check out the video description down below the video. You can also find the links to my YouTube channels down there as well, where you can see what I do in places that are not XDA. Make sure to hit that like button down below the video if you like this video and subscribe to receive our content as soon as it becomes available. Thank you so much for watching though, and I will see you again next time.